Quarter two has gotten off to a flying start for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Let's take a look at what we could expect from the price of Bitcoin in April and of course what we can expect for cryptocurrencies. As always, the link to our cryptocurrency investment community is in the top of the description. It's a new month, which means if you sign up annually, you'll get 16% off and the current month for free as well. So essentially 13 months for the price of 10. Plus the winners of the $4,000 Ethereum giveaway on Bybit are listed in the description down below. Go and check that out to see if you have won 1,000 bucks of Ethereum for lucky winners. Your code will be in the description. Without further ado, smash that like button if Bitcoin's going to $50,000 in April and subscribe with that bell notification icon. Let's dive in. Starting with the market sentiment, we're still sitting around neutral. Now is neutral, yesterday is neutral, last week slightly greedy, but essentially neutral. The last time we saw fear was last month and we've seen a lot of the uh, market popping out of that fear into the neutral side of things. So we're in an uptrend at the moment, but if we remain at these levels for too long, you can see what's happened in the past uh, August and then obviously October, November, we shoot up into a, a greed or an extreme greed. But if we sit around for too long, then the market flips and we start to get the move back down into the fearful zone rather than just sitting at neutral. We tend to flip between a greed and a fear rather than sitting at neutral for too long. This is the one year chart. So you can see a lot of the time in fear or another time in greed. Not too long is spent during that neutral stage. So I bring that up at the beginning of the video because that's what we're currently sitting at and it's been there that way for a couple of weeks. Looking at all of the data for the fear and greed, you can see we have a lot of times at the lows, then some bounces in between and then back to the lows. You can see that through the bear market and then it works its way to greed, back down again. And of course, we tend to play that game from the extremes rather than just sitting neutrally through the middle. So we'll take that into consideration moving into April and May. So we've got a lot of big news for Bitcoin as well. Most notably is... Terra Luna's foundation looking to buy $10 billion worth of Bitcoin, currently sitting at about $1.4 billion since January, so have bought $1.4 billion. The Luna Foundation now hodls 30,728 Bitcoin, total balance of $1.4 billion. So they're set to buy a little more as well. So we're seeing bigger news, but unlike we saw in 2021, the price hasn't moved that much in terms of uh, a dollar value compared to 2021. So I still see that market sentiment isn't there quite yet. Like we covered for Bitcoin price prediction in March, we'll do the same thing for April. So looking back at the historical data for April and March, well, we could see there's a pretty mixed bag. Some of these periods have been peaks for April, I could see in 2013. And then again in 2021, which was the previous all-time high before October and November took it out. We also saw some uh, reversals like we saw in 2020 when March took out the December low of 2019. April was a pretty strong month to get us out of that reversal, but we're not in that same sort of uh, period as, as what we saw back then. So I don't expect it to be a, a really strong month like we saw in 2020. There was a breakout in a tw uh, 2019 after the consolidation from the dump after the bear market. But again, we're not in that sort of pattern this time around. 2017 was in the middle of a bull market. 2016 was getting started in the bull market. And the previous two years, 14 and 15, it was in a bear market. So the price was basically turned at that point and then not much else happened in 2015. What is that saying for 2022? Well, I think the first thing is the market didn't really move that much for April's when the trend wasn't moving already. The trend was pretty heavily moving here. There was a lot of volatility. There was volatility after the breakout. There was volatility after the dump. There was volatility as we we're in a bull market into new all-time highs. This was the bear market and it already had a few months down and then the volatility stopped in April. Same deal in April 2015 and pretty much no volatility as well in 2012. So we haven't seen that much volatility in Bitcoin and I dare say maybe we won't see too much volatility in April either for the closing price. So there can be some movement in the month. Now we looked at corrections as well. So if we hit that number, it doesn't mean we absolutely stop there and the market stays dead for the rest of April. Of course it could, but I'm gonna look for areas of a reversal or a correction. So should we get that move up to 50%, which 
like we can see has happened so many times before and viewers of the channel know that we look at the 50% all the time and the market hits on those 50% amazingly well. It gets magnetized to those 50% levels. Check out this one on a monthly chart for Bitcoin back in 2018 to 2019. You can see we had the major bear market range and the market ran all the way up to the 50% level and it passed it, but the close was underneath. The next month touched above, the close was underneath and the close was underneath again. You can see just how well that pattern worked. So I'm using this as a bit of a guide moving forward as you know, this, has worked in, this has worked in the market for decades. All right, so then the correction comes in. The market tried again for 50% and we had the following correction. So the first correction was about 50%. So we're looking at this tool, 53% from the high down. Now the next one is about 60 odd percent to the low. But if I'm going to use this one in the middle, because this is obviously was a black swan event with the COVID crash in there, then we're looking at around 38%. So for a round number, call it about 40%. Now I'm using that because I'm not anticipating black swan events in the future. However, if we do get them, maybe we'd look at 60% from wherever that high comes in. And I'm looking at a high of about $50,000, $52,000 at this point in time. But if the high does come in, then we can measure from that high. So moving down from that high, I'm going to look at 40% and 60%. Let's take a look back at history. And then I'm just going to look at the 50% level again. You can see the market hit 50% had a pullback. The close was almost dead on the 50% level there, uh, about $9 over, and then it reversed. Guess what? 38%. Had a 38% reversal from the high to that reversal low before it started moving on again. Let's go back again, taking a look at 2011, 2012 market down. It was a few bucks off the 50%, about uh, 10%, I believe. Forget the tool up here. Yeah, about 10 to 11%. But the reversal was about, you guessed it, 38% again. So that's from the peak to this low point on the red bar here. So the low on the September bar, $9.79. The next low, $9.40. So it was actually a lower low. It's what I'm looking for here. So we got a 38% reversal from a rejection at the 50% point. I know I'm throwing a lot of numbers around, but we'll get to where the prediction is going. Just had to look back in history, give us a bit of an idea of what we're looking at moving forward. So if I use the $51,000 level and go down about 40%, that gives us a number of about 30 and a half thousand. I hear you already, you jump into the comment section, getting absolutely aggressive. Relax, it's all good. Let's have a look back to 38%. All right, 38 is at around 31,600. But we are moving into higher territory and we haven't seen massive drawdowns like we saw in the past. We saw a very big pullback from $31 to $2. And then we saw the 13, 12, sorry, the 1100 high down to the $160 low. So these are basically big bear markets in between, but we haven't seen that this time around. We haven't seen 80 or 90% corrections. So we've seen a 50% correction. We've seen that twice. So let's say half of this occurs. Well, 20% brings us out to about $40,500. That sounds a little bit more like where we could expect a pullback if the high was at around $51,000. So these are all hypotheticals as all price predictions are, no matter who's throwing them out there. But we're just having a look at what's happened in the past and then looking for a potential correction. So what else do I see? Well, the Bitcoin cycle low, I still believe has a few more months to play out, whether it's a higher low than what we saw in January, because January is the current major low in this downtrend not looking at the June low, which was the previous bear market for Bitcoin, but looking at this January. So I still think we have a few more months to play out before we see a final low. And that could be somewhere in July or June before we start to move higher again. Now I've put this video up months ago for the four, four year Bitcoin cycle low. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video and you can just go into more detail of why I am expecting another low for Bitcoin and I'll then expect crypto to follow suit along with this. Now, I don't think it's going to be a massive bear market, but so far this is playing out pretty well. The move to the upside is looking relatively weak. Maybe we get a bit of a pop off and just a test of the 50, 55. Who knows? Maybe we get crazy and get to get to $60,000 before a move back but it's not looking extremely strong yet. I still think we need more time to consolidate, reaccumulate before we take off to some higher prices. What else is supporting this? The total cryptocurrency market cap 
hasn't reached 50% yet. Same deal with Bitcoin, hasn't reached 50% yet. Still about 10 to 11% off that 50% testing zone. And so for the total market cap as well, about 6 to 7% as this is made up of all of the cryptocurrencies in cryptosphere. 2.25 trillion is the target price. And then maybe we see selling from uh, altcoin holders and the market just retrace over the next few months back to a possible higher low at this stage. But if the market is rejected at 50%, this is gonna be a critical point. Where does that low come in? Should we break the 50%, then the higher low needs to be above that 50% that level to give us a stronger looking market. Breaking it down to the shorter term timeframes, let's take a look at the weekly chart. So the resistance is still at 52,000. The halfway point is at 51,000. So we've covered where the 51 comes from. The 52 comes from all of those previous tops that happened in November and December where the market kept getting rejected after the dump in uh, early December. And we also had that $53,000 top before the liquidations came in in September. So all of these fundamental news announcement type uh, events have pushed the market down at those low $50,000 prices in the past. So I'm expecting some sort of test of those levels just to, just to gauge whether the smart money the investors are seeing strength in the market short term or they're finding some sort of weakness. Maybe they start to sell out when we get back to those levels. Now, the other thing that leads me to around that $50,000 level is my GAN extension, which comes in at $50,500 here. So I'm using the 125% here, the 1.25, we've reached the 100% at 47,000, so target achieved. And I'm looking just a little bit higher to those levels. So there's a lot of price um, clusters and price, price resistance coming in at those levels. If we slice through that and close above it, bets are off, structures changed, markets looking very strong. Slice through and sit on top. But if we take a little bit of a slow track to that level and get rejected, then I would think we're probably looking forward to quarter three, maybe late quarter two to find some sort of support again before we're able to take on those levels once again, those levels being $51,000. Now, this doesn't have to look like a straight line up and a straight line down before we take off again. It could be many weeks testing, come back, test again, fail, come back down. So it's just a matter of following the market week by week to see what the buyers and the sellers are doing. The difficulty with this for new investors is the patience required to set positions. This is what the smart money is doing. This is what the long-term investors are looking at. Viewers of the channel, you guys already know that these things take time. And it's often that we see the prices come all the way back to where they previously were. So often we get sucked into the FOMO as the market heads up thinking we're never going to see those prices again. However, it's proven many, many times before that the market does come back, give us that second opportunity, but we just have to be patient. And at that time, have some dry capital left to invest at those points. I think there's a high chance that Bitcoin does come to test the 50% level that we saw at about $51,000. How high it goes above that is unclear at the moment, but I think we'll get somewhere around that 50 to $52,000 level based on what we've talked about in today's video. Looking forward, where does that market hold up? Is it higher than January or is it lower than January? That's going to be a key signal for cryptocurrencies and whether or not it's time to load up the bags at that point or wait for lower prices. What is at a low price at the moment is our Patreon membership. Go and check out the link in the top of the description, 16% off annual memberships plus signing up now gives you the month of April for free. So essentially 13 months for the price of 10. Like the video if you think we're going to 50,000 in April. Also hit that subscribe with the bell notification icons. Plenty of updates coming up and of course the short term updates on the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency charts. Don't forget the winners to our exclusive $4,000 Ethereum giveaway with Bybit are in the the video description. Go down and check those out to see if you had won yourself a thousand bucks of ETH. I'll see you guys at the next video. Till then, have more fun to get more done.